Thomas Perry's The Butcher's Boy was a stunning, cunning, and unique thriller. However, the most recent and last portion in this series Eddie's Boy breaks a little new ground. For those that aren't tuned in, Michael Schaefer, as he right now calls himself, was orphaned as a little kid and taken in by the local butcher. He raised him as his own child. However, the butcher did not only cut and sell meat for the leaving. He had a side business that involved cutting, and in any case murdering, individuals that others needed dead. The two trades were passed on to his embraced child Michael. Presently, the butcher has been gone quite a while. Michael is an elderly person, retired from everything. Joyfully wedded to a minor individual from the British respectability, living in a marvelous home in the UK. They grow stunning rose bushes together. 60-year-old Michael Schaefer has been living for a very long time in Bath, England, with his significant other, Meg Holroyd, a rich and fabulous lady whom he loves. Once again, Michael is being chased after by old adversaries with whom he conflicted once upon a time when he was a contract killer, trained by the lone dad he ever knew, Eddie Mastruski. In Eddie's Boy, Michael goes to Australia and across America, escaping his hunters and attempting to reverse the situation on them. Beside a record of Michael's powerful memories about his loving bond with Eddie and charming associations he had with two of Eddie's alluring female clients, this novel is a repeat of old topics that Perry has covered previously. At the point when he isn't engaged in combat, Michael has discussions with an old colleague, Elizabeth Waring, from the US Division of Justice's Organized Crime Section. Too bad, she is careful about exchanging data with a man who has carried out such countless wrongdoings himself. Such a large number of characters in Eddie's Boy are idiotic hooligans, and once Perry sets up that Michael is the equivalent of practically any aggressor, there is little to hold our interest except more bloodshed. One after another scenes of slaughter, even, when the victims are themselves villainous, don't make for a shining work of fiction.